Mr. Sam. Mr. What are, Ganesh. What are we in today? We are in a Polestar 2. Correct, Amanda. For those who don't know, what is a Polestar? Polestar is a spin-off of Volvo. They used to do like performance oriented okay. stuff, but then they became their own company that is now doing EVs. Owned by Geely. Owned by Geely. Correct. Exactly. Okay. So very simple naming convention, right. like another automotive manufacturer as well. <laughs> right. You've got the one and the two and the three. And, yeah, we're in the two. Fair enough. And um, this would be a sedan. Yes. Yeah? Okay. It's a sedan, four doors. Uh, so it's an EV. It's a sedan. How is it in Dubai? That's what we're trying to figure out. So how is it in Dubai, Danish? Um, listen, I've had it for two days now and um, it is very smooth, it is easy to drive, it's got a lovely interior and might I add a full interior. Uh, when I say full, I mean it's not that bland, oh my god, what, I, what have I done interior that Tesla has. Uh, because uh, I, I, I like a nice full yeah, car. It, with... It's a more regular quote-unquote car Correct. layout. And thanks to its Volvo history, yeah, it's top quality materials, it feels really nice. Um, but yeah, and then it, that, the main thing is it's an EV, so it is a beautiful, comfortable drive. It has its quirks, which we'll get into in a minute, but on the overall, I'd give it a 8 on 10. Oh, we're doing scores now? Apparently. 8 out of 10. Okay. Apparently. Okay. <laughs> so, interior you mentioned. Okay. Obviously, very different to Tesla. Very different. Totally not as minimalist, more driver orientated and everything, but right. materials wise, I think just from reading and everything, Okay. Polestar has, you know, made that extra step yep. from a material standpoint to source responsibly. Correct. And even something I read about, you know, the plastics, a lot of other manufacturers will, you know, use toxic, uh, initially toxic okay. plastics, and then it ends up being that, whereas, you know, Polestar is tracking all of it. So that's if you awesome. go with the, uh, they've got Nappa leather. This is, that's the one we have. So yeah, you, you depending on what option you go right. with, you have vegan leather. Right. Or if you go with the Nappa leather, okay. it's, that's even sourced uh, ethically that it's been used for this and you can trace all the history and, that's awesome. and everything. So if you're right. into that thing, like, fantastic. Fair enough. That's a nice way of giving away that you're not. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm OG, I like cloth, Toyota, new crown, should have had velour seats. It really should have. I'm sorry, it, really it should, should have. have had velour, forget leather, we're in a hot climate, I, I want cloth seats, I, I like that. But fair, back to the Polestar. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely, the, the, it, it's something that stands out. Now, this is the third time that I'm seeing or interacting with a Polestar. Okay. Um, you remember in between we went and saw the Polestar 6 as well? Yes. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Polestar 6 is one of their concept vehicles. No, let me repeat that. It was a concept vehicle that is now a on-road vehicle that will be coming out in 2026. We have a whole video about that, so do check that out. But, but you can't buy one, they're already sold. They're already so sold. So forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. Just go check our video out and be happy that you can do that in life. Um, but on the overall, the, the Polestar, just quality just pops out of Polestar the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of you sit and you get into the cars. Um, the, the, as far as quality here goes, it's quite nice, but the, the, this finish is a bit rough in my opinion. Yeah, I mean the wood paneling is nice, this kind of grayish cloth looks nice. Right. But then on top of the mm -hmm. Window trim, dashboard, dashboard, on and the then sides of around here. here, where yep. it's like high touch, you can already see it's dirty. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a gamer. If right. you just you know scratch your mouse pad, yeah, and it's yeah, got yeah. a line. You you know it's dirty. Right. And it doesn't. It's okay. I mean, things get dirty. Yeah. You clean it off, but. This is almost looks like a porous type of material. Right. So I think it would be difficult to clean. It would. Um, I think so too. So I don't think and it's particularly. And not just that, I also think that one of the, let's say, downsides of a interior like this is also you have to go finding or you have to know how something like this gets cleaned properly. Yeah. You know I, I, I don't mean? think it's a usual gas station yeah, quick. Yeah 
go in clean yeah. job. Or then you're going to the gas station, but then like you have to have, I don't know, keep your eye on like how things are being cleaned yeah. because you know, those guys are just gonna rub away on it. So it's not bad. Um, I, I, I would have preferred a more flat, shiny finish. Mm. But then that's also maybe just the way we're trained and I guess that's what Polestar's trying to change. It doesn't uh, necessarily need to be shiny, but just a less porous material. It, it's got texture to it that you can easily It feels, see like even right now when I'm looking at the dashboard in this sunlight, it feels like I'm kind of looking at my sofa, if that makes sense. Which is okay, you don't get any glare. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, being porous, I just feel, oh. Yeah, I'd be interested. I'd be interested to know, like, if anyone out there is a Polestar user, um, please do let us know how this has kind of survived the test of time. We'd absolutely love to know. Do comment in the comment section. Um, but yeah, moving ahead, we've got um, this lovely display, and I'm so glad that three videos in a row we're on vertical displays. Yes! <laughs> As I've been saying now for a while, uh, I'm loving vertical displays. I can't believe that for the, such a long time, everyone thought that it needs to be horizontal. Um, they are interactive, they are easy to use. Everything splits up perfectly. So like, for example, I've been using CarPlay and in this car, it's uh, wired CarPlay and I'll come back to why in a minute. But um, the, 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 the entire setup of the CarPlay, everything, I, I love it. It's, it's a very, very nice display. Yeah, so specs wise, you've got a 11.2 inch display. Right. Not too sure how much the instrument cluster is. I'd but say it's, it's about 12 digital. inches or so. Yeah. It's a good size. But like you said, Google has worked with Polestar. Right. So it's the, it is your Android auto. Yes. yes. Built directly in. No so, faffing third party. Nothing. Yeah. So just to be clear, it's not. Like it's it's an Android operating system. It's not like it's not even that Android Auto is built in. It's it's an Android operating system completely. Yeah. Um, so that is really nice because, like for example, Google Maps. That's the map you use, yeah. and it's downloaded offline already. So I don't need the internet to use oh, it. Okay. Yeah. So that's really nice. Uh, every time you connect to the internet, it'll just update itself, or you can manually update it for another location. Um, and I saw you also have Play Store as well, so you yeah. can download yep. apps as well. So oh, I'm cool. okay. Le on as far as the apps part is concerned, when I when we drove the Volvo XC60, another video, check it out. Um, I remember distinctly mentioning the fact that. The App Store is very, very limited to certain apps that are like, okay. um, let's say the, uh, they're Tune basically radio. audios, audio, exactly, yeah, you know, audio apps or ebook e apps and stuff like that. Now, if this has been updated, I haven't played with it. I'll be honest with that. I haven't played with it completely, but uh, I'm going to assume a car like this is not going to have like YouTube playing videos yeah, yeah, yeah. and Netflix Safety and stuff reasons, like that. Right? Safety reasons would be there. Or if they have put it in, then most probably it plays. Yeah. And we actually have a video coming up with joying. So yes, we do. If you yes, don't, we do. You know. So if you have a regular, like you know, you have like a normal Joe like us, and you have normal, normal cars, and you wanna uh, kind of upgrade to a system like this, uh, we have a video coming out with joying. So keep an eye for that. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when we get that video out. Um. Yeah, so going into deep dive, what are right. we looking at? What can we control on the screen? Right, What's okay. All of that? So apart from the fact that you do have CarPlay and stuff, my favorite thing on this is the car menu itself. Okay. Where you have drive, assist, charge, and well, the more option. Drive is obviously steering wheel feel, um, the traction control, one pedal drive, and creep. Mm -hmm. Now, so a funny little thing that they've done, and I'm actually not sure if Tesla has this, and if you've seen it, correct me. Okay. But, um, so one pedal drive is there, and if you haven't driven, driven an electric car before, very, very quickly, one pedal drive is basically where braking and accelerating both are on one pedal, where when you, when you press it, it accelerates, and when you leave it, it uh, decelerates, and at that point also regenerates energy. Here, you know when you're driving to a signal, you're getting to a standstill, and the car just kind of creeps? Mm. Yeah, they've got a control for that. So you can click off, and the car will not creep. When you stop, it stops. Which okay. is, I think, a fancy way of the automatic brake. I think it's just their way of... Oh, so you're kind of getting auto brake right. if you use one right. pedal. Fair, right, fair. right, right. So that's there. So next up, then we have the assist section. Mm -hmm. That's where you've got your driver's support, lane keeping assist, driver alert, all the nice safety features yeah. that you would want in a car. 
Um, so you've got those over here and then you've got obviously charging. Mm -hmm. So for example, right now we're able to see that we're at 45% charge. We're able to set our charge limits for it. Uh, so all that's there. And last but not least, you've got things like exterior lights, locking, all those, because this car does not have a start stop button. No. When you get in the car, it starts. When you leave the car, it stops. It's That's kind it. of always on, it's just per se. Always on, I guess, yeah. But uh, I, I I, did miss that because like, sometimes you just like yesterday, I just, I was just waiting for my wife for 35 minutes and I didn't want to, I didn't want the car on. Like it was okay, the weather was bearable. I could just put the windows down and mm -hmm. sat there, but I couldn't switch off the car. Now, again, if I'm wrong about this, please do comment and let us know. I'm sure there must be a time to it. Maybe if you lock the car and then wait a certain amount mm. of time. No, so when you get out of the car, it locks instantaneously. When you get out of the car, and as soon as the key leaves the car and you, and you lock it, it's off, it's done. But if you're in the car and you lock it. That I did not try. Something to maybe, try out. Maybe. But fair. Um, so yeah, man. So this is it. And obviously in the main menu, you've also got what is range assistant. Now okay. as a non-regular EV driver, I've been keeping this on constantly because this shows me uh, my project projected range, but most importantly, my consumption levels. Okay. And it shows it very nicely. So I've got my, like right now as we're driving, and we're driving pretty calm and composed. Uh, I'm doing about 20, 25, on an average kilowatt hours for per 100 kilometers. Okay. Uh, I've noticed that obviously if I increase the AC, thanks to Dubai summer, it'll go up to 40 and 50. Uh, but on the overall, it also shows me what kind of a driver I am. So here it says driving style, low consumption, speed, low consumption, but climate control because the heat, high consumption. So I'm loving, I'm loving having this. I tried, there's an eco climate feature. Okay. Which changes the temperature of the air up and down. I tried it out, I died in the heat, I switched it off. So it's like Bedouin mode. <laughs> yeah, okay. so I was like, I can't, I can't do this. So yeah, man, that's pretty much about it. A lot of that information comes onto this display as well. Okay. Yeah, so like, for example, right now, we've got maps on. Like the display's got a nice matte finish. The resolution looks really high, it looks clear in. Yeah. There isn't that much customization. You can literally have maps. Yeah. And, and that's then you pretty much click it. one button and it cleans up and becomes a nice black display which just shows the distance you have to travel, speed, which mode you're in and the charge and like how much power you have. Yeah. So th that that cleanliness, that minimalism is all over the car, yeah. all over. And I, I absolutely adore that about it. So all mm -hmm. this charge talk, right? we're looking at 408 horsepower. Correct. 660 Newton meters of torque. Right. But there is apparently a performance upgrade feature, okay. which will give you 469 horsepower or 680 Newton meters of torque. Look. No idea how much it costs, but apparently you just get in touch with the dealer okay. and uh, you can get a bit more performance out of your vehicle. Okay. Speaking of all the performance and everything right. that's there, you've mm -hmm. been driving the car. Yeah. How do you feel? Are you having range anxiety? <sighs> is everything okay? So. Um, like I've mentioned before, um, in terms of range anxiety, I think that people like us who don't own EVs and don't have access to a charger at home mm -hmm. will always feel range anxiety. Okay. So I'm not going to blame that on Polestar. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I would feel it with a Tesla. I'd feel it with any electric car because I don't own a charger. Mm. That being said, in my experience with EVs, um, there is a bit of range anxiety because we don't have the largest charger network yet. True. And because there is no company except Tesla that has their own chargers, you're dependent. Yeah, the dedicated network. Yeah, so you're dependent in this case. And in that scenario is where I get a bit anxious. But listen, I got this car, a, I'll tell you the exact numbers, 154 kilometers ago. It showed me a range of 350. Okay. And uh, it now shows me a range of 170, which means for 154 kilometers of driving, I've range has eaten up yeah. 180. Which is not, which is not bad. Too bad. 30k. That being said, I've not done any of my daily driving with this, and what I have, I've done very chill. I've not okay. really been in a hurry to get Spirited to a meeting. Or, or exactly. Or so. I would say that in this summer heat, 
Um, don't expect the greatest performance from it, but I would like any other electric car as the winter cools down, as the winter comes around away and things cool down, the range will the get range better will for sure, for, for sure. Yeah. Right now, like as it literally says over here, like climate control is consuming a large amount of the power. So mm. cool. So exterior. Yep. What are your thoughts on the design? All right. So I mean, listen. <laughs> it's a it's a Volvo. <laughs> it looks like a Volvo. It feels like a Volvo. But it's not a Volvo. It's not a it's Volvo. A full star. <laughs> it's and again, I don't say that as any sort of insult. It is a very nice looking car. Um, it's got a big chunky bum, right? That's there. Um, it's got nice clean lines across it. It's not as aerodynamic as a Tesla, which funny enough is right behind us right now. Uh, it's not as aerodynamic looking as a Tesla. Like see the Tesla go right now. I'm sure that camera is catching it. Like see, you see how aerodynamic it looks? Mm. Yeah, this doesn't look that aerodynamic. Um, it's a little boxier, uh, but the lights are beautiful. Uh, I don't know what the actual term is, but like everyone calls it the Thor lights. Thor's hammer. Thor's hammer lights. Uh, love those. I think they look gorgeous. The tail lights also look very nice. Beautiful. Um, listen, the, from the exterior, one thing I can say is in the two days I've had it, I got some nice heads turning because it, it, it seems yeah, like something different they're like, on them. They're like, they're like, wait, we know this shape, but it looks a little different. What is this? What is this? What is this thing you're driving? You know? So, um, so yeah, that's, that's what I think about the exterior. What about you? I like it overall. I think it's something different. You don't see that many on the road. Right. Um, it looks more less like a bar of soap. Okay, yeah. So definitely, but that's all subjective down to uh, opinions as, as such. Right. Uh, just to add options wise, you've got 19 or 20 inch rims. Depending on which version you get. Which ver version you go for. And I like the, there was like four or five rim options yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like really yeah. cool if you want to customize and, it. And I like the exterior uh, color palette. Yeah. I like that. So we've got this, which is the snow version. Mm. Okay. Let's just call it what the regular name is. Let's not call it the fancy names, unless you've like got them written down. No, no. But it's like snow, which is white. Then there's magnesium, which is basically a light gray or a silver-ish. Okay. Then you've got a dark gray and then you've got black. So like, I like that color palette. Yeah. It's, it's very, very stable. Like in a place like Dubai, color matters and to a lot of people. Oh yeah, um, it's, and white and black are massively popular. But then for those who want to go a bit out of the way, they've got like the dark grey. And for the ones who want a colour but not so much, they've got the silver. I'm gonna call it silver. Yeah. yeah. So so that's really nice. I like that. I like I like that. Um, but like also I, I'm a guy who drives a green car. So like yeah, give me a yellow Polestar and I'll be getting it tomorrow. <laughs> Alright, so last few things. Well, what else would people like to know about the car? So interior wise. You've got two USB type C ports. Correct. You've got a, what do they call it? Air quality system. I couldn't quite find out if it actually deionizes and all of that. No, no, it's just, it's just a filter. Just a for, filter. For uh, two, whatever that is, nano, micron, meter, oh, okay, whatever. Okay, so just so a bit of a it's, air filter. Let's just put it this way. It's, it's, I'm sure it's a good quality one, but like even an MG has it. So it's not something to doubt. And then if you pick the right option, you can upgrade for a 13 speaker, 600 watt Oof. Harman Kardon sound system. Okay. Pumping along. Yeah. You've got a little frunk. Yes. Yeah. It's, not the, it's not the biggest frunk, but it's a nice place to keep your cables because one thing I noticed is that a lot of companies like, let's say, Mercedes or um, what else have we driven? Even MG's mm. uh, uh, car that we had um, in those. Because they don't have a frunk and it, the, the the wires take up um, a bunch of space in the yeah, boot. Yeah, yeah. So, so at least here there's a place and neat the and out of the way. Yeah, so I like that. And you've got... Oh the, yeah, this was cool. Hook. This was cool. So uh, picking up some groceries, you don't want to put it anywhere. You can literally just hang it off the glove box, uh, which is like very cool. Very cool little addition. Yeah, it is. Definitely nice little addition. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Wireless charging. Yeah, got a wireless charger. Listen, it's not the best because it's on a slope, um, but it's it's all right. I'm 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 happy it's there. All right. So last but not least, let's break down the pricing because I think that's where things get a bit complicated when buying a Polestar. Right. Starts at 185,000 dirhams. Okay. Which is super that's not bad. reasonable. That's not bad. 
all the way up to 274,000 dirhams, okay. which is what we're currently in now. Right. The interesting thing is, though, they have a single motor long range variant. That's cool. Which Tesla doesn't have, right. which will give you the most amount of range, right. which is interesting. Let's assume the base price as 250,000 dirhams. Okay? Yeah. Worth it? I think it's a definite option to consider given the the materials, the build quality, right. the drive, the less minimalist looking. Right. Go check it out. Yeah, definitely. Check definitely check it out. Um, on my, In my opinion, one reason I'm really enjoying the Polestar is because it's so non-Tesla, right? Mm -hmm. Like, listen, I really appreciate, I have nothing against Tesla. I really appreciate what they've done for the automotive world. But that being said, I also think they just went out there too much. Yeah, you know? this, this still kind of keeps those roots of a car. Right. And, I, and it's that right balance. Yes. It's minimal, nice materials, still looks like a car, feels For sure. like a car. It's For like sure. And that single motor, like long range, mm. that's something I would consider. Yeah. Because I don't care about the bells and whistles. I don't want to speed around, but I do want long range. Yeah. And considering this car would not have access to Tesla's supercharger network, at least for now, mm. um, it would be nice to yeah. have a little more, you know, range, uh, especially with the amount of driving I do. But um, but listen, on the overall, Polestar's done a good job. They're on the right path. Uh, I love all the eco-friendly messages they have. I love all the work that they're doing and um, yeah. All right, so let us know what you guys think. Um, it, it, wherever you live, is the Polestar available? Do you have it? Do you like it? Do you prefer it to a Tesla or something else you have in your market? Do let us know in the comments below. As you can see, we are a small channel, so anything you do, like, share, or subscribe, helps us go a long, long, long way. So thank you very much for watching. This is Sam, my name is Danesh, and we'll see you at the next one.